Okay, today we're going to set up the Flysky FSI6X and the receiver FSIA6B with the FT Aura 5 light. I think that you must have the FS-I6X model in order to do this because it supports serial out through the IA6B receiver. Serial out is necessary in order to communicate with the FT Aura 5 light. All right, so let's begin by turning on the transmitter, putting all the switches in the upright position, and then uh, I've already configured this, but I'm going to start over from scratch to prove to you that this can be done. So we're gonna reset the model. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, and then we're going to go out of the menu. All right, brand new model, FlySky 10. Let's name this something mildly unique. In the interest of time, I won't uh, go through the whole thing, but I'll start naming it Aura. AU and some bleh. Okay, cool. So once you've got it named how you want it, press and hold cancel. That's a wonderfully counterintuitive thing on these radios. Confirm by press and hold cancel. Okay. All right, so now there's some things that we need to do. First is we need to bind this transmitter to the receiver. So let's turn on the airplane. We'll plug in the battery here. Oh, it's already bound. Okay, so that's great. But let's just say it wasn't bound, just as a for instance. What we do, had a solid light and the receiver came up on here. That's how we knew it was bound. If it was not bound, we would take our bind plug, and I'll go through the process here, and plug it into the bind port, which is the leftmost, well, from this perspective, it's left, the furthest one on the bottom of the receiver on that side. Okay, so then we'll turn off the transmitter. And in this order, bind plug is in. Turn on the receiver by plugging in the airplane. Okay, it's flashing, it's in bind mode. Press and hold the bind button and turn on the transmitter. Binding okay, it's bound, solid red, that's good. So now then, we can turn off the transmitter, unplug the airplane, remove the bind plug, turn on the transmitter, and plug back in the airplane, and it is bound. Wonderful. Okay. There are some issues, however. We now have signal from the transmitter to the receiver, but we don't have a valid signal from the receiver to the FT Aura 5 light. See how it's solid orange? We know from the manual that solid orange means not receiving RX signal. Solid orange and no other lights, not receiving RX signal. Okay, so what we need to do is tell the transmitter to tell the receiver to not output the channels on the individual servo ports, but to output it on this serial output, which is connected to the FT Aura 5 light. We are using the receivers plugged into here, and then our servos for the airplane and the ESC are plugged into these ports from the manual from flight test. Okay, so let's do a few things. Let's go into the menu and we will go into system setup, go to RX setup, and come down to, let's see, that is output mode is what we want. We want to select S bus. So we're gonna move over to Serial S Bus. All right, S Bus is selected. Notice how the airplane is now getting signal, even though there's a horrible noise. So we're gonna 
put the throttle up there. We'll address this later. But to confirm, we press and hold cancel. Okay, next we need to do a couple of things. Notice how to get the ESC out of its configuration mode, I have to put the throttle all the way up. That's backwards, that's wrong. For some unknown reason, these transmitters, to use them with the Aura 5, I have to invert two of their channels. So let's do that now. Go to Menu. Go to the Model or Function Setup. Reverse. We're going to reverse channels 2 and channels 3. Press and hold Cancel to confirm. And we'll get out of there. Okay, good. Another thing we need to do is we need to set the sticks to 120% in all directions. End points. Set that up to 120%. To get to the other side, we move the stick to the other side. Set it at 120%. Go to the next one. Oh, it too far. That button's getting touchy. 120%, 120%, okay, 120%, 120%. By the way, you should always take the propeller off of the airplane when you're doing these sort of configurations. Um, I do not currently have the propeller off. I have the propeller on, so this is a do as I say, not as I do. If you don't take the propeller off, someday you'll learn why you should. Okay, set it to 120%. Oh, um, went too far. Okay, 120%. I'm not an expert at navigating these menus either. Okay, sounds good. Press and hold cancel to confirm. Okay, great. Now one other thing needs to be done. We need to configure channel five to this switch right here. Now you might ask, well, what's channel five? Well, we have our four main channels, aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder, okay? Well, those are channels one, two, three, and four respectively. Channels 5, 6, 7, and so on, as many as you have channels in your transmitter, are all of the knobs and switches and things. Okay, so we want to set up channel 5 to be controlled by this switch right here. Now, if you've never used these switches before, you may have to enable them. Why you'd ever want them disabled, I have no idea, but that's the way the software works. So we'll press and hold OK to get into the menu. Main menu, system menu here. We're going to come down to auxiliary switches. Okay. Oh, they want the airplane turned off. Okay. There we go. Auxiliary switches now. Notice how I have them all on. If any of yours are off and you'd like to use them, you'll need to turn them on. We're going to be using SWC. It is so labeled up here. SWC. So we at least want to make sure that for us, SWC is on, which it is. Okay, great. Press and hold cancel to confirm. Okay, then we need to put this switch on channel 5. So now that the switch is enabled, we'll put it on channel 5. So we'll go to the function setup, go down. Oh, down here to auxiliary channels, okay? Channel 5 is currently on VARA, which is this knob right here. We want it to be this switch, so we're going to press the up and down buttons to where we get it to where we want. SWC, switch C. I'm choosing switch C because as far as I know, it's the only three position switch, and the flight test board wants to see a three position switch there. Okay. Channel 6, we don't need that, so we can set that to none. Okay. 7 and 8 are also none. All right, 5 is switch C. Perfect. Press and hold cancel to confirm. 
Okay, now I believe we should be ready to set up our airplane. Okay, so this is assuming that you've also followed this setup here for ailerons, or excuse me, throttle, ailerons, elevator, and rudder are all plugged into these ports here. Okay. So let's turn on uh, the airplane. So it comes up, and now the yellow is washing it out on the camera, but there is a green light and a yellow light here. So the green light and the yellow light mean that receiving valid RX signal, okay? So those are both lit. It's hard to see, but they're there. Okay, so uh, make sure all of our servos are plugged in. I had previously unplugged the rudder. You'll find out why in a minute. Okay, now let's see what we got. We got elevators working, ailerons working, rudders working, throttles working. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, what if one of your servos was reversed? or it needed to be reversed. That would be like, uh, what if you're moving the sticks and it's moving the wrong way? Do not change it in the transmitter, that's wrong. Because it has to be correlated to up and down, left, right, physical uh, orientation and directions and the aura. So the aura needs to know which way to move the servos to straighten out your airplane when it's flying. So if your servos are backwards, we have to get it into reversing mode. So in order to do that, you have to press and hold both buttons. I'm gonna remove the elevator, or excuse me, the rudder port so that I can get in here and press and hold both of those two buttons at the same time for about five seconds or so until it flashes green. Okay, now we are in reversing mode. So if one of our servos need to be reversed, now that we're in this mode, we can hold it a particular direction until the servo moves. And now it's reversed. We'll put it back because I had it right the first time. Okay, now uh, I don't have the camera view set up here for this, but if you also wanted to know what the airplane would do to correct certain things, you can, for instance, well, maybe get, I can get the wing in here. Okay, you can't see the whole wing exactly, but you can see this aileron here. You can roll it or pitch it or yaw it past 45, and it will move the servo in the direction, it's sort of a for instance, that it would need to correct it. Move it in the direction it would need to correct it. It's just a for instance. So that way you can check that your servo directions are set up properly from the Aura's perspective. Okay, now the other thing you might want to do is to enable six axis mode. That's so that you can have full stabilization. Uh, a beginner will probably most certainly want this. In fact, it's one of the major features of this board. So in order to enable that, press and hold the bind button. Until it turns blue and all the servos go crazy saying some things. And when, okay, did you hear how they all moved? One, two, three, do, do, do. That means they're in three axis mode. So let's press and hold it again. I had it set right before. So they all went one, two, three, four, five, six. Tell you it's in six axis mode, which is what we want or at least six axis mode is enabled anyway. So we can turn that mode on and off on the fly by using this switch here, which is what we've got it configured for. Okay, perfect. So now we're gonna come in here and we're gonna press and hold both of them until the light goes off and then it resets itself. And we have green and yellow and let's check some things. 
we have our elevators going the proper direction. The aileron is going the proper direction. The rudder, oh, it's not plugged in. Let's plug it in. The rudder is going the proper direction. And we have throttle. <coughs> All right, so I think we're ready to fly. Let's check one other thing, or we'll go through a for instance in case you had trouble with it. That's calibrating the ESC. You may need to do that. So let's do that now, just in case we need to. Um, so we'll unplug the, uh, the battery here. And what calibrating the ESC is, is the ESC wants to know how negative is full zero throttle and how positive is full full throttle, okay? So you're calibrating this range here. All right, let's calibrate that range. So what you do is you put the throttle all the way up and plug it in. And when the ESC comes up, it'll make some strange noises. Okay, I'll move it down. All right, I think I'm doing this correct. Okay. Okay. Now it's calibrated. I think I did that right. If not, you might have to watch some videos about calibrating the ESC. It's a step that should be easy to do once we've got all this set up. All right, so I think the airplane should be ready to fly. However, a couple of things are, are key to remember here. Okay, so now, the way this is set up, this is full stabilization mode in the middle. So let's check that. Okay, the elevator is moving when I move the airplane point pitched up and down. This is no stabilization at all. And this is three axis, like wind correction, correction stabilization. So basically you could think of this corrects for temporary disturbances. This corrects for constant disturbances. And this is no correction whatsoever. That's the way the switch will be set up. So this, this sticker is wrong. We need to change this sticker. All right, should be ready to go. The other thing to remember is you may need to trim your airplane and you'll have to follow the flight test videos on how to trim the airplane. Um, so it's helpful if you can get an accomplished pilot to help you trim it out the first time and then you should be good to go from there. Um, if you built the airplane very true, it may not need any trim, but it might still need trim. Hard to know. Okay, so it looks like we're all ready to go here and ready to fly. So this could be theoretically done on any airplane without the need for a PC. All right, thank you very much, bye.